Lord, for this church to be here. For the many people who come from different nations. For many people who have been through these doors all these nine years. Pray a blessing over the different ministries that have been started from this church, for people who have left from this church and who have started different ministries, God, different, who found a calling here and have gone out to fulfill your work, to do your work. We pray that as we come together right now as a family, God, that, that we will not just be a family that enjoys being with each other, being with each other, but also a family that is looking to bless each other, looking to liberate each other, looking to pray for each other and do your kingdom work here, God. And I read it. Thank you for the opportunities you give us here in the city of God. Thank you for the opportunities you give us back at our homes, for the university, for, for everyone who's here, God. We just thank you for that. You're the center of it all,
Good morning, everyone. How are you doing? Awesome. How are you doing? Good. Okay, that's almost good. Um, I'm going to share a God story, um, and it's meant as an encouragement because I believe that God can can use us, you, every single day if we just ask Him, and that's what my story is about. So. I guess quite a few of you were at the last um, drum worship night where we had Pastor Ron from Open Doors come and he was really, really encouraging. He reminded us that, well, compared to other parts of the world here, we don't really have any persecution going on, you know? And um, he inspired us with amazing stories of people who do have persecution going on in their countries and yet they go and pray for opportunities to testify and they share the gospel and they do so many things and he really encouraged us to pray so that we would be able to testify to those around us as well and I thought hey why not you know so I was on Wednesday night and on Thursday morning I prayed to God to give me an opportunity to testify to someone and um, I was really curious because I knew that that specific day I would be basically at home studying or with other Christians. So I was like, well, I don't know, we'll see what happens. And actually, we had a small group in the evening and one of our members brought a friend with him and that friend was not Christian and at the end of small group we just spent a while just like answering questions and telling him what we believed and discussing different views and it was just really, really good. And then, way after he left, I thought, oh wait, that was my opportunity to testify. I hadn't even realized. And it was just really cool. And it was so cool that I was like, okay, I'll try again Saturday. So I did it. So on Saturday, again, I prayed for an opportunity to testify. And Saturday was going to be a cross the line dinner. Now, for those of you who know, Serve the City is an organization where, well, a lot of us are Christians, but we're not officially a Christian organization. And since I'm kind of like coordinating the cross line dinners, it's not like I can just like go around and say, hey, I love Jesus, that's why I do it even. So I was like, okay, so how's that one gonna work out? And uh, it was actually after the cross the line dinner, then one of our team members, we just ended up talking and um, yeah, and she ended up sharing quite a bit about her story and then we shared a bit about our story as well and then she ended up coming to church and she was really interested in just joining us and learning more about, well, Jesus. And so I was just really, really thankful. So, like, what I thought is just that God just knows me, you, and the people around you so well. Like, he knows them better than us and he knows when it's the right moment for us to speak to them and he just makes doors open in a way that's just so easy for us to share like it's not like I was saying anything crazy I was just sharing about what I believe what I know and and something else that came to my mind is that I didn't even have to like um, shift things around in my schedule because I was like spending time spreading the gospel no it was it just fit, like God just makes everything fit. So I just wanted to really encourage you because God really knows your priorities and your limits and your gifts. And if you just ask him to use you, he will. And you can do that every single day, no matter what your job or your course or whoever your friends are, like, I'm sure God can use you. So I'd say just take the risk to ask him and then you'll see whatever he does with it. I don't know how well you remember some of the other sermons that we've had, but we're talking about memories today. Now, depending upon your church background, maybe you've heard sermons that are taken from Isaiah where he says like, oh, forget the things of the past, don't even remember them because God's doing a new thing. And there are really good sermons to be had out of that, but this is not one of those. Um, because Paul doesn't seem to tell Timothy, forget everything that you've known, or forget the past. Instead, Paul tells them several times, remember, or I'm reminding you, or call to memory. And so I want to look at that today of, of the importance of memories 
and uh, what were some of the things he was supposed to remember? If kids want to, you can stay back where you are, but if you want, I have a carpet here just for you, and we'll let kids be a broad term. For those of you who are like, I'm a kid and I'm 20, I'm actually okay with that, if you feel like sitting and staring up at me. Um, there will be a few moments where hopefully uh, you all can interact and play. Yes, thank you. So, four things to remember. Here's the first thing to remember. Remember family. <laughs> so, Paul tells Timothy several times, oh, my son, my son, as he writes these letters to Timothy. And he tells Timothy, I remember you. In 2 Timothy 1, Paul writes, Timothy, I thank God for you, the God I serve with a clear conscience, just as my ancestors did. So even there, like Paul's remembering, like these are my ancestors. This is my, the legacy that's been handed down to me. And he says, Timothy, night and day, I constantly remember you in my prayers. And I wanted to see you again because I remember the tears that you had the last time that we parted. Paul is remembering Timothy in his prayers. And that's something that I, I want to say for us as a church. We are a church family. Here's an important thing for us to know. We're supposed to remember one another, and that includes remembering each other in our prayers, even when we're far apart. We've had more than 1,000 people who have come through this church in the last nine years that have been here sometimes for one Sunday, sometimes for, for several years. We've had so many come through, and I know it's hard to remember everyone's names because I don't remember everyone's names. But to be praying for those, even those that have moved away, and to remember them is something that I think is good for us to think about today, to remember that, to remember that part of family. But Paul also tells Timothy, hey, the faith that's in you, I know that faith that's in you because it was the faith that was in your grandmother and in your mother. And so Paul does talk about Timothy's like actual blood family and remembers them and is reminding Timothy, hey, remember the legacy that's been passed to you from your family? Now, we don't actually know a lot about Paul's genetic family. We know a little bit. We're told his dad's a Pharisee. And we're told that he has a nephew from his sister. And that's about it that we know of the extent of his family. It's possible that he was married and then widowed. That's also not clear. So we don't know if he had a wife. But Timothy would have known all these things about Paul's family and saw some of the interactions with it or heard about how that went because Paul's nephew one time helped save Paul's life. And so remembering our, our actual blood family as well as remembering like the wider family. When Paul says, I remember you, my son, I remember you in my prayers, and when they said, we remember the churches and all the times that Paul and Timothy co-wrote these letters and talk about, we remember you in our prayers and what are you but our joy? All these things, Paul often, often, often remembers family and tells them to do the same. So there's that family thing. There's, there's also spiritual family. One other time where we're told that even in Timothy's. Paul writes to Timothy and says, you know, I hope God remembers Onesiphorus and treats his family well because Onesiphorus remembered me when I was in jail. He says, this, this man, Onesiphorus, he wasn't afraid of me when I was in jail. He wasn't ashamed of me, but he searched Paul over to try to find me. And so Paul is sort of doing this prayer for Anesiphora, saying, God, remember him with kindness and show him special kindness because of how he's treated me. And that memory is something that, that passes along. Paul also wrote to Timothy, look, remember this. The sins of some people are obvious, and some of them won't be shown until later, and likewise, the good deeds of people become obvious, and they won't hide themselves forever. And so, with that one, Paul is not saying that the end justifies the means, but that the end will show the means. That in the end, God remembers how we lived, how this has gone, and, and it will be shown whether we lived by His righteousness or whether we lived for our own selves. So that's all part of remembering people in the family. Second thing to remember, remember the scriptures. That also had to do with Timothy's family, because Paul says, hey, you knew the childhood scriptures. Like, when you were a child, you've been taught that. And so remember those, keep your mind on those. All those things that I've taught you, keep doing that. 
Remain faithful to what I've taught you. You've been taught the Holy Scriptures. Remember them. And Timothy saw that in Paul, where Paul used these old Hebrew Scriptures in what Paul would say, as he would write. And, and he saw sort of the creativity that Paul applied to the Scriptures. When Paul is telling Timothy, hey, those who are good workers in, in the family of God, elders and those sorts of things, those should receive money because we read in the Hebrew scriptures, do not muzzle the ox while it's treading the wheat. And he says, was that really talking about oxen or was that talking about people? And so it's taken a little creative license there. But, but Timothy sees how, how Paul remembers what God has said and how he implies that. And through, through our church, that's something that we really want to do, is that we have the whole Bible, but there have definitely been verses that, that we've picked out more often. So I have a game for you all that includes the scripture and seeing what you remember or what you know. Okay, so there's four things that I was going to have you all remember that Paul is telling Timothy to remember. What was thing number one? Remember family. Thing number two? Remember scriptures. The third one is remember Jesus. Because the scriptures point toward Jesus. Paul tells Timothy, Look, Timothy, you've heard me teach these things. You've, you've heard and seen that they were confirmed by reliable witnesses. Now teach those to others. And always remember that Jesus Christ, a descendant of King David, was raised from the dead. That's the good news I preach. He says, Timothy, always remember. Don't just sort of remember. Always remember that Jesus Christ, the descendant of King David was raised from the dead because Jesus is king. So he rose from the dead. Now, I am not a professional at balloon modeling. Um, my hope and my assumption is that this is going to work out okay. Yes. Sort of. So who wants to hold the big cross? Yeah? Yeah, can you stand up here and keep holding this? Okay. And then... We're not done, let's make another one. I am doing one of the simplest balloon items, just so you know. I, I tried other ones last night, and like, let's go with the cross. Cross is simple. <laughs> Damien, Damien, do you want to hold one of the crosses up here? Uh, yeah, yeah. Huh? Oh, yes. That's for you. And how many of you remember how many crosses there were on Golgotha? Three. Well, then we got to make a third one. I also told someone today that three is my favorite number, which is true. So it's great to be able to make three of them. Hey, and none of them pop. You want to hold the third one? No? Do I have a third child that wants to hold? You know, I'm okay with that denial. You can just. <laughs> I'm not afraid about it. I'll stand and hold it. So we remember Jesus, and often the cross is that picture that we use of like, oh, if you want to show Jesus, the picture we show is the cross. And that, that's good and that's valid. But he doesn't say just remember Jesus crucified. He says remember Jesus, who is the descendant of King David, raised from the dead. So the resurrection of Jesus is very important, but also the, this whole like descendant of King Jesus, and even calling him Jesus Christ. I hope by now most people know, but you might not. Christ was not Jesus' last name. It's not like I'm Matthew Lunders, he's Jesus Christ. Christ is a title for the Messiah, for the Anointed One, that gives us a picture of the King. And remembering that Jesus is the King, and that Jesus is our King, is important. And in this church we try to do that. And remembering Jesus is part of our motto. For those of you who know it, you can say it along with me, but it's we, the church, as followers of Jesus, will love as Jesus loved, will teach what Jesus taught, and obey as Jesus obeyed. We want to remember Jesus always. And so when we remember the scriptures, we remember Jesus in them. When we remember our family, we remember Jesus in that as well. And so there's this great kid song about Jesus being a king that I wanted to get to sing. And if any kids want to help me with that, what's the song? Do you think we can do the whole song together and sort of try? So, who is the king of the jungle? Ooh, ooh, ooh. 
Who is the king of the sea? Ba -ba 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 -ba. Who is the king of the universe? And who's the king of me? I tell you, J E S U S. Yes! He is the king of me. He is the king of the universe. The jungle and the sea. Ba -ba 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 -ba. scripture and he says God's truth stands firm the Lord knows those who are his so this beautiful picture when he's telling Timothy remember Jesus always remember Jesus the Lord's firm truth stands firm that he knows those who are his he remembers his family as well amen so as we remember family the Lord remembers his family so our three things so far remember Family, remember scriptures, remember Jesus. And the last one I want to mention is remember the gifting. Paul tells Timothy over and over and over, and he keeps reminding him of, of how Timothy has been gifted, the spiritual gifts that you've been given. He says, I, I remind you of the spiritual gift you received when I laid hands on you. And he reminds Timothy of the prophecies that were spoken about him. So some of you may remember in the past, uh, a few weeks ago, we had this incredible gift. So do any of the children want to get to be a gift today? You want to try to both fit in this at one time? Okay, come on. Because here's the thing. He says we've been given a gift. If you have the gift, then you walk around with that gift. <laughs> This is totally, okay. Now the question, whose head gets to come out first? Here, can you stick your head out the side? Will that work? <laughs> now, can you go take that gift out to the world? Can you walk around to people? <laughs> Do you want to stay in that, or do you want me to help you? You just want to stay in there? Yeah? yeah. You sure? Okay. <laughs> remember the gifting that you've received. See, Paul told Timothy also about Paul's own gifting of what he received, and he constantly reminded Timothy and other churches about what he had received. Because Paul says, look, I remember who I was. I was a violent man, I was a blasphemer, I was trying to destroy God's work, but because God in his great mercy saved me, he wanted to use that as an example so that others would also come to see this gospel of grace that I've been given. And Paul tells people several times, look, I have been entrusted, I am a messenger, I am a, a carrier of the gospel, so that I can share the good news with the Gentiles. I can share the good news with God's people. So Timothy would have known that Paul didn't forget his past. Paul didn't go like, oh yeah, I used to be horrible, I've forgotten all about that. Instead, Paul saw it through the, the lens of redemption and of grace. He remembered it not to his shame, but to God's glory. And he remembered, this is who I was, but I was called by the Lord, and this is how he's changed me. And so when Paul tells Timothy, Timothy, don't forget what you've been given as well. Timothy has something that he can connect that with. He can see, yes, this is how Paul remembered that calling and how Paul gave so much of his life toward it. Even when it was tough, Paul continued to share the good news through beatings, through shipwrecks, 
through people trying to kill him, through getting stoned, through all of these. But Paul did not forget the gifting he had. And what was Timothy's gifting? It seems like teaching was definitely a part of that because very close with all these, Timothy, remember the spiritual gift you received and continue to teach what I've taught you, more or less. Over and over he talked about teaching. And so as I thought on that for us, and it, as individuals, it's also good. What's the gifting you've received? Do you know it and are you using it? Are, are you... I mean, do you need me to be like Paul? You can be Timothy today. And he say, don't forget the spiritual gift you receive. And, and knowing what that gift is includes using it. But us as a church, to remember that today as well. Who are we? What, what's, what's the calling? What's the gifting that's been put upon us? And today that's part of what we celebrate and what we look at. I know some of those things. We're this like multicultural diversity of ages and countries and backgrounds that come together in Jesus Christ by His grace to be a unified family. That's part of our gifting. That's not a gift that's only given to us, but we get to have that gift and see it. I admit, I was super encouraged this morning. Uh, Rita and I were the first two that were here. But this is the second year that Rita's been a part of the church. So I asked her, hey, what, what has been special about this year, the second year, instead of just the first year? And she said, this year has been a lot about community and unity. Those are the two things I remember. Am I saying that correct? But there's been so much growth in that. The first year, I learned a lot, but it was kind of me by myself. But this year has been about community and unity. I'm really growing from that. And honestly, that's, that's where all of us need to be or get to. That, that we're growing together. We weren't made to just grow alone. We weren't made to just use our giftings in and by ourselves. But we're sort of like all those children's like superhero shows where like there's the hero, but then like when the team comes together, they're all stronger together. You ever watch those shows as a kid? I totally did. Like, oh yeah, Ultron, awesome, like 15 things, yeah, we're stronger together. Well, that's true of us today. And that community and that unity is part of that gifting that we've received as a church. Which I think includes all of the incredible food cultures that have been brought together here in this church. I see that as a spiritual gifting that God has given. Maybe some others don't see it quite that way, I do with building up younger people, making disciples, that's part of our calling for sure. And I believe it's also part of our gifting as a church. That that's what we do, that's part of our DNA, which should be the part of every church. But to see that each person has a role to play in helping people to do that. That's what I want our church to be. It's not built on me as one person, it's not built on our pastoral staff, is not built on just our servant leaders. Yes, we are a part of the foundation, but this whole body that's coming together, this whole building is each of us using our giftings, each of us growing in that. And so helping people to actually use those opportunities is part of what we're called to do. And I believe the gift that God gave us that we need to keep remembering is there. And so whether that's in kids' ministry or in drum whether that's on the worship team or doing a sound and media in the back or all those, we need to keep remembering that gift of each other that we've been given. That's part of the remembering your family because the gifting is, part of the gift is we've been given each other. And if you forget, if you forget those around you, if you forget the giftings that they've received, you're not able to use yours quite as well. I don't ever want to forget that. I believe God has gifted me. I'm really grateful for that. But if I just look at me, I'm not, I'm not going to be what I'm supposed to be. Because my gifting only takes me so far, but our giftings together build this church. Our giftings together are what Jesus wants to use through the power of his Holy Spirit to go out and change this world. And so please remember your gifting as an individual. Remember the gift of each other. So, the four things I want you to remember today. One, 
Remember family. We're celebrating family today. Enjoy it and remember one another. Take that time. Second, remember scripture. Because it's about what God has said to us. And God's words are powerful. And God's words, even the ones that were said thousands of years ago, continue to reverberate in people's lives and change them today. It still has its power because our God is still alive and still has power in his word that he keeps speaking. So remember the scriptures. Remember third, Jesus. Because Jesus is always our example. Jesus is the one who loved us and gave himself for us. And he was the one who died that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them. One of my favorite Bible verses. So we remember Jesus because he's shown us how to live now in that same example. And then fourth, remember giftings. So if we'll go out and do that, that'll be good. And I can give you tons of other verses from Timothy for it, but here's your Timothy task. Each week I've been giving a, a task, something to, to help you put some of this into practice. So especially on the like remember your giftings, but some of the other ones. Take time to go through something that you have, have had in the past that were either deep conversations with other people or for yourself that tell you more about who you were and who you are. So maybe that's old emails, maybe that's letters, maybe that's texts, maybe you kept a diary. But look through some of those things from the past. Use that remembering time to see who you were. Maybe that's reminding you some of the giftings that God gave you that you haven't been putting into use for a while. Or maybe that's just remembering some of the stuff that God told you. Maybe those are prophecies, just like Paul tells Timothy, hey, remember those prophecies that were prophesied over you? Yeah, those are still to come true. Remember them. Put them into practice. Look for it. For me, a few months ago, I remember I was looking for some sheet music. And I was like, I know I have this music somewhere in, in all the boxes that we have kind of upstairs stacked away in my house. So I was going through these boxes and I found all these old notes that I had written when I was in university and high school. And as I'm flipping through them, it was this weird, like, I felt like I went back 10 years in time and 15 years in time and then 20 years in time as I went to the next book. And I just remembered all of who I had been. And had kind of that moment of, okay, God, is am I still growing in where I'm supposed to be? Am I still following that path that you're following? Because as I looked through it, I saw this is the path God has taken me on. And it was a moment to stop and be grateful. It was a moment to stop and be honest with myself and see, hey, have I forgotten something? And, and to be called on to something new. And so maybe take some time to look through something old that you have that you know of. And some of those have been emails that I've written back and forth with friends as well. There's all those. And see where you've come from and what God is gifting you to be. Take that time and then actually go out and use it. But start with that moment of looking back at the past and what God has told you. And for some of us, you've been walking with the Lord, with the Holy Spirit for decades. And others, it's like, well, that's been about two weeks by now. And that's okay. To be able to be like Paul and say, I can look back at my life, I can see what God has done. It's a beautiful moment to get to do. And so I see that with this church as well. I, since I've been able to be here all of the last nine years, I can see how we've grown and changed. And I, I know the stories of what the city was like before our church was here. And from hearing people say, oh, I wish there was a church. Oh, I wish we could find a family. And now you've just shown up. And, and like, I can see the change that's happened in us as a community, in me as a person, and in the city. And so this has been a really great for me to remember, and I hope you'll also take moments to remember as well. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for being a collector of memories in a good way. I thank you that when you forgive our sins, you don't hold them against us and you wipe out that record. You're not someone who holds on to old grudges, but you are someone who remembers what you've spoken to us. And you remember the things that you have put into us. You remember how we were created. You're like a good parent who's watched the child grow and still cherishes memories from each one of those stages. And so may we have a little more of your view. 
pray that we'd be able to see ourselves through your eyes. We'd accept what you say about us. And as we remember you, as we remember Jesus Christ, as we remember your Holy Spirit and the good things we receive through your Spirit, may we go out and live like you did. May people see your work in us. And as we do good works, may they glorify our God and Father in heaven. Thank you for this family, and I pray a blessing upon this church. May the next year be better than the previous year. May we go deeper into your word and into your likeness. May we touch more lives. May our changed lives be changing lives around us. So that your word would spread through the city of Mount. And through this region. And through the world. May we go into all the world and make disciples. Thank you for all you've given us. In Jesus' name.